Hi everyone, welcome back. This is the first in a couple of videos that's going to talk about some of the basic stuff you can do with sounds, sound effects, master volume, background volume music in your games. Okay, so we're going to start off simple today. We're just going to take a look at playing a sound and checking to see if that sound is already playing. Um, two ways, using the ID of the sound and using the resource name of the sound. Uh, next video is going to look at how do you separate the sounds like background music versus sound effects and then it's going to go from there right to do even more stuff with sounds. So let's get started with the player object. What I have in my player object here which is this skull is I've just added one simple command press the space bar and there's basically the command to start playing a sound. So you'll see here the new sound engine the command is audio play sound you give it the name of the sound resource right which was sound cannon you give it a priority now the priority can be basically 0 to 1 or 1 to 100 you just pick a number the higher the number the more priority so if your game is going all intense and playing hundreds of sounds at once you know there will be a pecking order to which ones it attempts and uh, puts more resource to try to play first so I always put one my games never have that many sounds it always works just fine the last parameter here is false, which just means not looping, okay, a one-time play. Now with this working, I can already hit play, and it's that easy. The sound's going to play for us. So if I hit it, right, there it goes, perfect. Now you'll also hear I had some background music playing. I use the same command in another object, right, to get the background music playing. Now, one common thing people ask about in their games is if I'm already playing a sound, don't play the sound again. So, let's take a look at two different ways to do this. Here's way number one. I'm going to go right back to where I was before. I'm actually going to comment out those two lines I had, and I'm going to uncomment out this code that I already have typed out here, just to save us a bit of time. And you'll see what it says here. Another script you have available to you in the new audio engine is audio is plain. You can give it the name of a sound or you can give it the name of the resource. Now I'm going to change this. Sound cannon is the cannon sound I'm trying to play. So let's do this. Let's go sound cannon. And I'm basically saying if audio is plain, sound cannon returns back false. I'm not playing it. So I'll just print out a little message. I'll do a little ring and I will play the sound, sound cannon. Okay, otherwise I'll just say already playing. So when I give this a go now, what we should see is as I spam the space bar, I'm only going to get the sound playing once. And you can see those messages down below too. I'll just throw this up a bit and watch down here. And as I push, you'll see it's playing. And I'm just repeatedly hitting the space bar here. It waits for the sound to finish until it plays again. Now, some games this is good, some games this isn't good. It all depends, right? Uh, whether you want that to happen in your game or not. Now, that's one way to do it. You'll notice what I gave the is playing command is the name of the sound resource in your resource tree here, sound cannon. Now, the one problem with doing it this way that we want to warn you about is if you have two players playing, and they're both playing sound cannon when they fire, then if player one is already playing their sound and player two goes to fire, well, yes, the cannon's playing. It's not going to play the cannon for player two. So Game Maker, of course, has a way around this. You can actually check if individual sounds are playing because you can remember their ID. So let's talk about that a bit. In my player object here, let's pretend I had two players right on the screen or three or four of these player objects I'm gonna give them an instance variable called Canon sound ID and like game maker when it actually equals nothing don't set it to zero I find that can cause problems game maker likes you to remember IDs with negative four okay that means nothing being remembered right now so what this is about is every time you play sound that sound script audio play sound will actually send you back an ID to reference that sound, that individual sound that is actually playing. Now what I want to do is I want to remember that sound. And that's what this variable is for, Canon Sound ID. So here's how I use it. When I go to press the space bar to fire, 
and I do all this, when I eventually go to play the sound here on this line, I'm going to say that. Okay, Canon sound ID equals the ID that this script returns back to me. Okay, it's keeping track of that sound it's playing, and it gets a special number like 2,056. And so I'm now remembering that right there. So 2,056. Now when I go up to this line, what I can ask is I can ask if audio is playing Canon sound ID. So if you sort of get the idea here, this is negative 4 to start. So it says audio, is it playing negative 4? Well, no, of course it's not playing negative 4 sound right now. So it plays the sound, makes a sound in memory. It's playing it, and it has a number like 2,056. Now that's 2,056. When it comes back the next time that space bar is hit, this is going to be 2,056. Is it still playing? Well, it's sort of a long sound. It's still playing. Okay, it won't bother doing this again. And it comes here, right? Even when the sound finishes playing, 2,056 is playing. No, it's not. It will be false. Then it gets to play it again. So this is a nice idea, right? That sound has a resource ID, or I shouldn't say a resource ID. It has an ID number uh, that's being kept track of. So this lets you individually control the sounds. So if you have two players, then each player has their very own Canon sound ID variable, and it's going to keep track of their Canon ID. So it works nice. You can see that this still works exactly the same, but the difference is this would work if you had lots of players. Not playing, it's Perfect. Okay, so that's a nice little thing there. So remember, you can check by the resource name itself, which will be all those sounds in the game, or you can check by individual sounds that you started by remembering their ID. You can see I've done the same thing, just quickly, in the background music object here. So sound control, I've made a variable called background music ID. Now, I don't really need to set it to negative 4 because right off the bat, I'm doing this. So I say, hey, plow, play, sorry, play some background music. Remember its ID. So I remember it with global background music ID. And what you'll see in the next video is when I actually go to try to change background music. I think I do it, let's say, with the K here. We'll show in the next video. You can see... Now I can actually individually control. So audio sound gain, global background music ID. I use that ID. So it's more important. It's just not for checking if it's playing. You can actually use these IDs for more, but that's in the next video. We'll see you then.